Three, two. of entrepreneurs. From now on, you are entitled to dream big because you can make your dreams come true. Six, three, three. Dreams. Who among us doesn't like to dream and even dream big? How much would we pay to undergo an instant process that would enable us to obtain the inspiration, information, and conviction we need to make dreams a reality? And believe me, there's no need to wait for a magic machine. In fact, even now we can help each and every one of you reach your full potential. Discover the unique and hidden skills you already have. Skills that will allow you to not only dream, but make those dreams a reality. And when I say now, I mean right now. Nice to meet you. My name is Tyler Norton, and I am an entrepreneur. And with the technology you have on hand, the 3D glasses and the interactive remote controls, I'm gonna take you on a thrilling journey into a world made up entirely of inspiration, a place where dreams become reality. This is not a science fiction movie. This is a reality that is waiting for you right under your noses. This is the Entrepreneurship Academy. Inside of this academy, we learn about the enterprises started by many of the world's most famous entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs who dreamt big and then made their dreams come true. Many of them had no advanced training or money, but what they did have was a clear sense of their identity and their strengths. They had a strong desire to build something and never give up. Take, for example, Rob Ryan the entrepreneur that made history when within only 10 years, he grew the company he founded from nothing into an organization that made the growth of the worldwide internet possible. A company that was later sold for a whopping $24 billion. Rob was born in a Bronx, New York City community to a milkman father and a housewife mother. Like lots of teenagers, he started out mowing lawns and delivering newspapers. But thinking outside the box led him to invent special ways of earning more pocket money. There was a golf course near his house where Rob would gather the stray balls which the golf players lost and sell them back to the golf club. Sometimes he was too enthusiastic and collected balls that the players still had not given up on. After being scorned, he understood that when thinking outside the box, it's important to stick to the rules of the game and to trade fairly. After graduating from Cornell, Rob got a job as an engineer at Intel and where he was recognized quickly as the engineer of the year. But he wanted to make his dreams come true his way. So on the advice of his wife, Terry, he decided to start his own company that would be more successful than the competition. He brought together three faithful engineers who wanted to know what the new company would make. Rob told them that he did not know. The customers would decide. For a whole month, Rob and his team took an arduous trek across the United States to carry out a survey of digital communications customers. What bothers them? What do they need? And how much are they willing to pay in order to receive a solution to their needs? Equipped with this information, they turned Ascend into the leading company for building the infrastructure for Internet service providers. 
with a creative spirit in its sales and a refreshing and innovative managerial approach, Ascend was led to the biggest exit in the history of technology. $24 billion. Stop the film! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop the film! This experience is not about me. This is about you and for you. Follow me. Hi, Mr. Hi. Mr. Ryan. Hi. Good morning, Mr. Ryan. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the Entrepreneurship Hall of Fame. Here we'll find some of the best and brightest entrepreneurs of all time. them weren't any different than you or me, and they all worked hard to get there. Some of them failing over and over until they finally reached their goals. Take Edison, for example, the man who, among other things, invented the electric light bulb. He said, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. I also failed a number of times until I found that special sauce. So, just what is an entrepreneur? Well, the word entrepreneur is originally a French word, and its meaning is to undertake or to try. So an entrepreneur is someone willing to try something new, to undertake an idea and build that idea into a business. And some of the most successful entrepreneurs start out at a very young age, just like you. This is the Young Entrepreneur's Wing. Each of them has an ID card describing the qualities and resources that allow them to become an entrepreneur. Understanding your unique identity is the first step in becoming an entrepreneur. Let me tell you about that special sauce. I call it the sunflower model. The seeds at the center of the sunflower model represent your unique identity. These are the things you're good at, your skills or your advantages. I call these core competencies. Those seeds help you to grow your ideas. And these ideas are the petals on your sunflower. Thus, musical talent in an empty garage can result in the creation of a band or a study music app. A skill for baking and biking can be transformed into a baked goods home delivery service. A love of science and an advanced lab at school can motivate you to create an innovative chemical solution. Skills with plastic arts and a will to help those in need can lead to an initiative for building homes for homeless people, as nine-year-old Haley Fort from Bremerton, Washington did. In order to demonstrate how simple my sunflower model is, I need a volunteer. Me, I want you. Me, come on, me. over here. Me, me. No, please, no, take no, me. Hi. What about me. you? Yeah. Take me. I see right someone here. who's me. especially me. excited. Right here. Right here. Brilliant, me. Dr. Zhang. Oh, wow. Hi. 
Nice to meet you. You too. This is Dr. Zhang Hui, which means intelligence in Chinese. Hello. Nice to meet you. And I'm Rob Ryan. What's your name? Uh, I'm sorry, it's David. David, let's do a sunflower together. To start, I need to better understand your identity. The seeds at the center of your sunflower. So please tell me a little bit about yourself. There, there isn't much to tell. Uh, I'm a regular guy. I'm 16. Uh, I love to hang out with my friends. Uh, basketball, soccer, movies. That's it. There's nothing special. I'm just like everyone else. With all due respect, everyone has their own unique identity. There's close to seven billion people, and each has his or her own uniqueness. In fact, no two fingerprints are alike in the entire world. Let's scan you to find out what your special identity is. Scan? Uh, don't don't worry, it's fun. Dr. Zhang, please scan David. Smartphone champion gamer. Loves to make cookies with his grandmother. Good at making friends. Volunteers in an organization for at-risk youth. Now, out of all your special abilities, your core competencies, which of them would give you the biggest advantage starting a business? I, I don't know. None of them seem like a business idea to me. You know what? Maybe you need a little help. All right, guys. Let's help David decide. Each one of David's identity seeds has a number. Use your remotes to choose the ability that you think provides the best starting point for David's new business. And please, only choose the one you think is best. Interesting choice. The truth is that most of the elements of David's identity can help form a new business. Great. In my opinion, this is a good place to start. What's so special about this? My mom says that I'm wasting my time with these games. How can you turn this into a business? I see something more than that. Because you're playing on your smartphone so much, you're an expert and know how to make the experience better. Take a look at someone who turned such a skill into a huge business. My name is Brian Wong, and I'm an entrepreneur. I grew up in Vancouver, in Canada. We, you know, we weren't like wealthy by any means. That like, we were like probably lower middle class. We were still, you know, going for everything that had discounts. At an early age, I got a gaming PC. Spent a lot of time playing games. Probably about eight hours at its peak per day, which was insane. I think my parents thought in the beginning that I was uh, addicted. And in fact, there was a, at one point they threatened to take my computer away because I was spending too much time on it. I love traveling, and then during that time I was on these flights and I saw a lot of people on their phones playing a lot of games. Every time you see a lot of people doing one behavior and it's, you seem to notice it everywhere, it's like it's something to pay attention to as an entrepreneur because it's an opportunity. And that's what got me the idea was actually seeing people playing a lot of games and I was playing a lot of games myself. And I was like, well, why are the ads on games so terrible? And if that consumer behavior is growing so much, maybe there's a interesting business opportunity around advertising and making it less intrusive. So that's essentially what uh, ended up leading to the idea. And that idea became KIPP. With the help of the KIPP team, Brian now has a chance to influence how people experience games around the world. KIPP has received over $10 million from investors who also believe in Brian's core competencies. What an incredible story. Let's see how alert you are, and if you're getting how the Sunflower model works. Remotes in hand. Where in the Sunflower model does Brian's project appear? The core, the petals, the stem. It's not connected to the Sunflower model. The correct answer is 2.
The project is one of the pedals. It is one of the products that can be made with Brian's core competency. Who's responsible for the project's success? The users of the smartphones. The companies that make the games for the smartphones. The advertisers that give away rewards. All of the above. The correct answer is 4. In order for the project to be successful, Brian will need the cooperation of several sources. What do you think about what you just saw? Incredible! But how do you know if your idea is a good one? What do you need to know in order to make it a reality? There's an old Chinese saying, those who don't do are never wrong, and those who are never wrong oh. do not know anything. Exactly. I get it. So I just need an idea and then I become a millionaire. Whoa, 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 slow down. There are many entrepreneurs with lots of good ideas, but their ideas are getting dusty on the shelf because they don't know how to connect them to good people and make them a reality. Mm. So you mean build a team? Exactly. Sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know that makes the difference. And there's no better people to talk about it than Justin and Cody Hyde. Who are they? Justin and Cody Hyde are entrepreneurs, and one of their sunflower seeds is their ability to make friends. Hey, David, what's up, man? Hey, one of the biggest secrets of building a successful business is making friends everywhere you go. As good as an idea is, it needs other people in order to succeed. You can't do it all by yourself. Build a team that will help you get there. Teamwork is always an advantage because investors want to know that the business is not dependent on one person only, as fine and talented as that person may be. Now, of course, that's not enough, but it is a really promising start. Okay, let's continue. David, choose one element from your core competency list. Okay, the fact that I like to bake cookies with my grandmother that can't be a business. I actually think that's not a bad idea. Let's check our database. Whoa. My name is Brandon Weimer and I'm an entrepreneur. I had been making this coffee for about three or four years before we started the company. I had a family friend uh, that gave me the recipe back in middle school and I started making it as a hobby. I really didn't know what I was getting into, I just really enjoyed cooking. 2006, a good friend and I, Leah Post, we wanted to go on a class trip to Italy. Our parents said if we fundraised half, they would match those funds. I made almond toffee and we ended up paying off the whole trip in full. Of course, that was the big hype was, wow, we're going to Italy, we paid for the whole trip, but we had already got the ball rolling in regards to a brand. It was something where we said, let's keep it going. And we really started with local street fairs. Leah's dad was in web design, so he was able to create a simple shopping cart online for us, just trying to get the word out. I like to say that you know it's not rocket science, it's something where I knew how to make toffee, that was about it. We're not business people, or marketing, or anything like that. It's something that we've learned as we've gone through the process, and, and it's still heading in the right direction. We're, yeah, we're, we're growing very, very rapidly. So, yeah, it's exciting to see where it's going to go. And that growth meant opening a large facility that can make more than just toffee. Brandon added more petals to his sunflower, and his company now creates various products that are sold around the world. What started as a small idea grew into a multinational distribution of sweet products. Brandy Toffee, Toffee, life is sweet. Cool story, isn't it? Come on, remotes in hands. Which pedal or other business path would you recommend to Leah and Brandon to try to develop on the basis of their core? Toffee drink, toffee ice cream, colored toffee, all the answers are correct. All the answers are correct, of course. If your specialty is making toffee, then there are endless products that they can develop. What's this? Toffee drink. It's a new idea. Uh. <laughs> 
sorry. I didn't mean to do that. A toffee drink may not be a success, but developing new products requires an open mind and lots of creativity. Hmm. I'm gonna call my grandma. <laughs> oh. No need to rush. David, meet my wife and business partner. Hi. Hi, David. Nice to meet you. I'm Terry. But I've come here today to talk to the girls in the audience about the role of young women in business. There are many successful women entrepreneurs in the Hall of Fame. For example, look at Oprah Winfrey or Martha Stewart. And what about Ariana Huffington? And men and women really work well together. When Rob and I started our company, the head of engineering was a young woman less than 10 years older than you. And I was the company attorney. Let me share an example of a teenage girl who started a business. I'm Megan Grassle and I'm an entrepreneur. I went shopping with my younger sister to buy her very first bras. She was 13 at the time and I was 17 and we went to all of these different stores and I remember just being like totally appalled at all of the super sexualized options that were not just available for my younger sister but like marketed to her and to girls her age. And I remember thinking like, there's just kind of something wrong with this picture. I sort of had this like epiphany and I was like, okay, if no one else is going to make bras for tween girls, then I'm gonna figure out a way to do it myself. I knew that it was much bigger than just like a bra for my sister. This was like a bigger problem than just her. In fact, Megan conducted a survey among retailers and discovered she would not be able to sell through them. So she sought a marketing avenue more suited to her needs. I think it was very discouraging when I first started because no one took me seriously. When you sit in the car and tell your mom that you want to change the bra industry, she's like, okay, honey, like, that's great. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And so I went on Google and I was like, okay, to make a bra, you need fabric. I sourced fabrics from sort of these like random places on the West Coast. So it was like the day-to-day -day figuring out of how to do that. I looked at Kickstarter as a way to raise money without giving away any equity. And then it was literally overnight, the entire campaign was funded. There was all of this like incredible support. And Megan's impact has grown incredibly. What began as one pedal is now a portfolio of pedals. And Megan's small company now has deals with major retailers who want to sell her products. And girls everywhere can buy their first bra feeling safe and comfortable. All because of Megan. You know what happens now. Remotes in hand. Despite the negative answer that Megan got from the retailers, why did she decide to start the business? A sense of responsibility towards her little sister. The market survey she conducted among her sister's friends. She wanted to make money badly. She thought the retailers are wrong. The correct answer is two. The right way is to conduct a market survey and see what price the clients are willing to pay for the product. Megan raised $25,000 through Kickstarter. How did she know the exact sum she needs to create the website? Her intuition told her it would be enough. She thought it's the maximum she'll be able to raise. She made a business plan and checked prices. All the answers are correct. The correct answer is three. Like any serious entrepreneur seeking to raise funds, Megan realized that she must write a business plan that will prove the endeavor has a chance to succeed. While it's hard to gauge revenues in advance, it's easy to find out the expense of the initial establishment and the cost of creating and maintaining the website. Let's draw your sunflower and find the right way to use your own talent. First, 
identify your core competencies. You turn your ID into an idea. It doesn't matter if it's a profit-making business or a social initiative that changes the world. It all starts with you. Cool. I assume that only a very creative person can have good ideas. But at the same time, he must be a very good businessman as well. Can one person hold those two qualifications? To give you an answer, let's have a look in your brain. Yeah, right. How are you going to do that? I'll take it from here. Hi, my name is Randy Garn, and I am an entrepreneur who has created many interesting businesses. And in all of them, I have used both sides of our brains. Let's go into your brain, David. As you know, the brain is made up of two major parts called hemispheres. Whoa, cool. This is how it looks inside? Complicated. <laughs> The right hemisphere is where emotions reign, controls different feelings, interpretations, sensations, dreams, and even our thoughts. Yeah, right. You can't see thoughts. But of course you can. Hey, that's Nellie, my girlfriend. Wow, I like this side. <laughs> it feels, it desires, it's creative. And what's on the other side? Well, let's go there. the left hemisphere, it deals mostly with language, data processing, rationality, and logic. That's the side I like, the one that deals with numbers and math. In short, our brain has both capabilities. Some of us are dreamers and some of us are analyzers. So in many cases, it's best to work in a team. What about that one, David? What about it? What does my volunteering have to do with business? They're related. You'll see. Hi, my name is Juliette Brindak, and I'm an entrepreneur. The most important thing is to kind of understand what is the purpose of your idea? Who is going to be your audience? What problem is it going to fix? Or like what need is it going to address? I had my own stuff going on in middle school. I think every girl does. A lot of girls, they, they have insecurities and they have someone who's doing something to them to make them upset. And my sister is five years younger than me. I started seeing things that my friends and I were dealing with in middle school, starting with Olivia and her friends. And as an older sister, I was like, I want to do something to help her and her friends. And it starts from drawings that I did when I was 10 years old that I called Cool Girls. But really for years, it was just a hobby. But my mom, who is a graphic designer, kind of took my drawings and evolved them to the Minnesota and Friends characters. And what we did for her Olivia eighth birthday party, we created these Minnesota-like characters for all of her friends. And because they related and responded so well to these characters, we thought that creating a site was a really great way to visually get these young girls interested and then like get them to the site and see everything else that it has to offer. Miss O grew quickly as online word spread. Girls wanted to see this new place online with the cool characters, and parents were happy that they finally had a safe environment to let their girls enjoy online. What started as one core competency for Juliet became a huge online success and grabbed the attention of many investors. You know what happens now. Remotes in hand. What made Juliet realize that her new enterprise has huge potential? Her feelings of responsibility towards her sister. The market survey she conducted among her sister's friends. She wanted to make a lot of money. None of the above. The correct answer is two. During her sister's birthday party, Juliet noted how her sister's friends were reacting positively to the characters she created. She realized that her characters had an audience. You see, David, the fact that you're involved in social activities can open your awareness to areas from which a business can be developed. That way you're doing something for society and creating a successful product. Super cool. 
Wow, I never thought of it like that. But how do I choose which idea is best? This is what my matrix is for. It tells you how to make decisions and how to line your team. You'll be able to find it on the website. Now it's your turn, David, and yours to put theory into practice. As soon as you leave, start thinking about your core competencies at the center of your sunflower and the petals you can grow out of it. When you go home, Rob will be waiting on a special website that's been opened just for you. There you'll receive practical tools for growing your sunflower. But listen, this isn't just any site. On this site, we're setting up a competition and we're going to help you with your business plans. The best ones, we're gonna help make them happen. And you too, girls, when it comes to creativity, let's show them we're the best. So don't miss this once in a lifetime opportunity. Oh, keep in touch. I'm Johnny, and these, these are my friends. We just viewed License to Dream, and it made us want to establish an enterprise. Aiden, like that Leah and Brandon, made millions through toffee. Alex is calling her mom to get her well-known recipes. And Daniel? Daniel's trying to figure out what he does best. So we decided to head to my place and start working on our core competencies. You know, the things we do best. Where'd you go? I got a call from the tour company about the trip we planned to the mountains. Oh, yeah? It turns out they can't transport handicapped people. What? Does that mean you can't join us? No. Why can't they? Because it requires special equipment and renting it will cost us $2,500. $2,500? 25? No way, Ari. You're coming with us. Forget about it, guys. You go without me. It's fine. Guys, we might as well call off the trip. Am I right? Sorry, guys. I didn't know this would happen. Don't worry about it. It's not your fault. Bummer. I really wanted to go on that trip. Yeah, me too. But Ari's condition didn't leave us too many options. But you, you guys still want to go to my place and think of an idea for a business? On the way home, we realize that we have to do everything we can to make the trip happen with Ari. We'll try to use the tool that we learned in the presentation, and Aiden even downloaded the app. Now, we just need to find an idea. Okay, guys, listen up. Daniel, Daniel! Aiden, Alex, we're gonna do what they showed us in the presentation, and we're gonna start by drawing a sunflower. Okay, so, in the center of our sunflower, we write our core competencies, our skills, talents, and resources. I wrote, can play the guitar. How about you, Daniel? What do you get at? Me? Ugh, I'm good at napping. <laughs> Aiden, how about you? Um, well, my dad's a carpenter, so we'll have access to a carpentry shop. Excellent. How about you, Alex? My dad has a printing house, so we can photocopy and print huge quantities. Oh, yeah. And my mom has an awesome recipe for empanadas. Oh, I forgot. Uh, my mom's cornbread. Johnny, write down recipes for a homemade soul food. We decided to focus on the ideas that are based on the core competencies that are related to food, such as setting up a special food stall in the market. Aiden's dad can build a stall in his carpentry shop, but Alex and Daniel had an argument. The empanadas or soul food? So, soul food. No, we said empanadas. No, we said empanadas. Soul food. Empanadas. 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 Hey, 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 hey. Let's just put it to a vote. Guys, come here. Let me show you something amazing. Listen, no need to wing it. I'm looking at the app, and it instructs you on every phase of the process. 
It says here that in order to choose among several ideas, we should use the rating system. In the chart, you analyze the ideas based on several parameters. Uniqueness, competition, strategic relationships, and more. Each one is scored from 1 to 10, and the idea that gets the highest score is the one that's chosen. Okay, we've come to the last category, uniqueness. I give the soul food a score of 8, and the empanadas a score of 6. Um, I give the empanadas a 9, and the soul food a 7. Hmm, nine for the soul food and five for the empanadas. Huh? Oh, come on. Why only five? Because there's a food truck right next to the market. It would steal our customers for sure. Oh, wait. I didn't know that. So I'm changing my score for the empanadas from nine to six. No, 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 no. I think seven for the soul food and eight for the empanadas. I don't think the food truck has so much of a selection. So I'm changing my score for the empanadas to an eight. Fine. Okay, let's see who got the highest score. So far, it's the soul food. <laughs> yes. With a score of 7.8. Hey, bro, what's up? Hey, um, not too much. You want to do something? I'm bored. Sorry, can't. I'm in the middle of family dinner. <laughs> Talk to you later. Um, okay. Sweet. Ari, he is not coming up. Hey, Aiden, why didn't you tell us you have a knack for arts and crafts? Does this count? Of course. Show it to us. Look at that. Okay. Wow. Forget my idea. Do you know how to make anything else? Um, yeah. Wow. This looks cool. Oh. Wow. Let me see that. Daniel, look at this. <laughs> Thanks to Aiden's talent, we can manufacture a variety of unique origami products. Great idea. I can get huge amounts of special paper at a real cheap price from my dad's printing house. Wow. So, what's the product? We're going to sell a finished product, right? Uh, actually, I thought the product we'd sell would be a piece of paper with folding instructions. Uh, hold on. Oh, here it is. We have to conduct a market survey. Huh? We have to interview potential customers and see if they'd be willing to buy a product such as this and how much they'd be willing to pay. The goal is to gauge what they consider the perfect product. The answers we got in the market study threw us for a loop. People don't want a piece of paper with instructions because it's too complicated. On the other hand, they don't want a finished product. They want a product to be functional. What's up, Ari? Um, nothing much. Want to go to a movie? I'm sitting here at home, a bit bummed. Yeah, I wish I could, but my aunt and uncle are here from overseas, and we're having a big dinner. My cousins are look. here, and I haven't seen them in like three years. Whoa! Shh. We're having a big dinner. Uh, some other time? Okay, so talk to me. So that's why they're screening my calls. They're creating their business without me. My condition is not my fault, and it's not fair that they're blaming me for the trip being canceled. Daniel, you are a genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are lots of paper lampshades, so why not an origami lampshade? <laughs> You're amazing. I think we should show the product to my dad now. Huh? Huh? My dad, he imports and exports lighting fixtures. He can teach us about the market. Obviously, we added this fact to our core competencies, so we have three. Aiden's skill, affordable paper from the printing house of Alex's father, and my dad's expertise. We wanted to ask him for a loan so we can purchase all the equipment we need. And, uh, that's pretty much it.
I think he developed a very practical and aesthetic product. I can already estimate the vast demand overseas as well. Oh, yeah. How much money do you need? Uh, $400. $800. <laughs> hmm? Johnny, Daniel, that's not good enough. Okay, I'm willing to give you money, not as a loan, rather as a business partner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But before I invest, I want to see your business plan, Johnny. Business plan? Aiden? Uh, Aiden? <clears throat> oh. Okay. It appears is the next thing we have to do. In order to create a well-organized business plan, you have to answer the following questions. What is the cost of your product? How did you price it? Who are your customers? How are you going to reach them? So many questions to deal with. Seems to me you still have work to do. But one thing's for sure, you're in luck. In three days, there's a fair at the shopping center outside my store. And yeah. if you work hard enough, you can sell your products. Yeah, we All can right. Yeah. In short, yeah. crunch the numbers and get back oh, to this. We is got this. <laughs> Three days, no problem. We can make it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the cost of making each product is one dollar. And based on our market study and the information we got from Johnny's dad, we can sell it for five dollars. Yep. How many products do we want to create for the fair? Well, uh, if we want to make a nice profit, then we have to make 600 products. Oh. Yeah. So we need $600 from your dad. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to call my dad. Uh, guys, we have to make 600 pieces, and we have three days. You'll have to help me. Five hundred ninety-eight? Five hundred ninety-nine? Six hundred! That's me! Okay, I just wanted to say that we really worked our asses off these past few days. Mm -hmm. We totally gave 100% of ourselves. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, even if we don't sell the products, we should all be proud of ourselves. Hey! Remember me? I thought you're my friends. And since that thing with the trip, you don't even answer my calls. Is this any way for friends to behave? Ari, we just... You're creating your own business, and you don't even think to ask me if I want to be part of it. Ari... It's not my fault you're not going on the trip, especially not my fault I'm in a wheelchair. Ari, it's not what you think. We wanted to surprise don't you. Don't lie to me. Hey, Ari... What do you mean, surprise me? We kept this a secret because what we really wanted was to go on this trip together. And we didn't want you to be disappointed if we didn't raise the money. Right. Mm -hmm. I felt like a jerk. They've been such good friends to me, and I was angry for nothing. D-Day has arrived, and with the experience I had in sales in my uncle's shop, we added my expertise to our core competencies. Hi, can I get a couple of... Yeah, thank you very much. How much is this for you? Thank, thank, thank you so much. Bye. I appreciate it. Hey, Daniel, how many have you sold so far? 56. Only? Really? This sucks, and the fair is shutting down in 90 minutes. Attention customers, we apologize, but due to a malfunction of the main power line, we will have to close the fair. Sorry for the inconvenience, and thank you very much for understanding. It's okay, guys. We did our best.
guys. Open the boxes. Ari, what are you talking about? Turn it on. Our light bulbs work on batteries, not on electricity. Ari, you're a genius. If there's one thing my uncle taught me, it's that if you want to attract customers, you have to put on a show. And so we did. What a beautiful oh, story. Oh, yeah. I'll I'll this, please. And the crowd loved it. We did it. We got the money and finally all went on the trip. We even got the tour company to think seriously about an entire target audience that wasn't previously considered. We also started manufacturing complementary products, an origami vase with paper flowers, an origami fruit bowl with origami fruit, and so much more. But we never forgot what is most important to us, our friendship, which is perhaps our strongest core competency, a real identity. Now it's time to part ways. Time for you to begin dreaming and developing your businesses. I'll be waiting for you on the website. The following clip will explain what you'll find on that website and how we can help you. We invite you to download the License to Dream app on your smartphone. There you will find two tracks, social and business. After you decide which track is relevant for you, you will receive practical tools which will help you to check feasibility and to implement the ideas you already have or the ideas that came to you during the last hour and a half. Using these tools, you will be able to discover the potential of your ideas and what they lack so that you will be able to move forward. Rob and his team will wait for you there in order to help and teach you how to present your ideas in the best way possible. This will help you in the big national competition for this program when some of you will win prizes and receive support for starting your projects. All of you can win. None of you have an advantage at this point. You can create the advantage the moment you leave the hall. So come on, go to the App Store or Google Play and download the License to Dream app on your smartphone. And I'll finish with Mark Twain. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Let's find out why together. Never forget that you have a license to dream.